I'm Evan Delahanty, and I'm speaking with Derek Champagne about my entrepreneurial journey. Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. The following interview is designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. Your host, Derek Champagne, is the founder and CEO of The Artist Evolution, a full-service agency building successful brands, marketing tools, and campaigns, and also the author of the best-selling book, Don't Buy a Duck. And now, let's begin today's Leadership Series interview. Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where our goal is to inspire you to become the best leader that you can be. I want to take a moment and talk with anyone who is having any challenges with their branding or with building an effective marketing campaign. I'm super excited that my wife, Valerie, and I have a new marketing course, an online course that we share all of our secrets for building an effective brand and for building a marketing campaign that works and takes all the guesswork out of your marketing, provides an action plan, and gives recommendations for marketing tactics that actually get results. You can learn more at ChampagneMarketingCourses.com. Today we are talking with Evan Delahanty. He is uh, the owner of Peaceful Fruits. You may have seen him on the TV show Shark Tank. He's making big waves right now with his product, Peaceful Fruits. Evan, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much, Derek. I'm happy to be here. You have this really cool product, Growing Social Goods Snacks Startup, dedicated to making snacks that are good for you, good for the world. I had fun looking at your before and after uh, charts of your growth that you've had from some of the things that you've had going on. I'd love to hear, though, your entrepreneurial journey. Just kind of take us back to your early days and then what got you to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Peaceful Fruits started after I was a Peace Corps volunteer in the Amazon rainforest. I was living in a little country called Suriname, which is just there on the northeast coast of South America, right next to Brazil. Hmm. And you know, when I came back, I wanted to stay connected to the people, to the Amazon rainforest, to re really being part of making a difference in the world. But what I also learned as a Peace Corps volunteer is just the importance of, of the profit motive. You know, sometimes that's a, a dirty word to some folks. You know, there's good things, bad things about it. But, you know, what I saw is that everybody needs to make a living and uh, you can't ask folks to do stuff you know, whether it's, you know, even if it's in their, their, their best interest or for their family, whatever, like, of course, that's all important, but everybody's got to eat both today and tomorrow. And if you don't keep both of those in mind, you know, to let people make a living today and into the future, then whatever you're doing isn't going to be truly sustainable. And so that's the idea where Peace of Fruits was born is how can we build a business that lets people make the right decision today and then keep on making it day after day after day. Let's make it easy for people to do the right sustainable thing from the producer side, from the consumer side, and everything in between. I really like the concept, and we'll get it more into what your actual product and what your business model is. But take me back to, you were in the Peace Corps, you had this idea. Many people have ideas, but not everybody acts on it, and you did it in a big way. What was your mindset? Did you have an, a, a business background? Did you have an entrepreneurial experience? What fueled you to actually take action? Yeah, well, for me... Um, you know, I, I was a little bit different from your average Peace Corps volunteer because I went in, you know, uh, still early in my career, but after four years in operations management of a, of a private company um, that does uh, industrial supply. So, you know, very salt of the earth, you know, boring by some, by some method measures, but, uh, you know, I got real world management and project management experience um, in the business sector. And then I took that and went to the Peace Corps. Um, and so what I was doing in Peace Corps was all around, uh, you know, organizing project management and a lot of small business and entrepreneurial, uh, support for the folks down there in the Amazon. Um, and honestly, what happened is, uh, I got a job offer coming out of Peace Corps for the picture perfect job for, for me, for Evan, which was, uh, you know, being involved with a green energy organization, a solar energy company in, in Africa to help them build a division and, you know, really scale it from nothing to something where, you know, if you were successful as, as growing that division, you'd grow into being the number two or number three guy at the company. Wow. Um, and I ended up saying no to that because, 
I just wasn't ready to move from Suriname straight to uh, West Africa. Um, you know, I was ready to come home and, you know, reconnect with my family and my community and my, you know, my country. Um, but, you know, if I, if I felt like if I'm going to say no to the picture perfect job opportunity and I've been, you know, preaching, if you will, teaching mm-hmm. entrepreneurship and small business management and all that for the last couple of years, like it's kind of on me to build something better if I'm going to say no to something that perfect. And so that's where I decided it's, it's time to get off the pot, so to speak, mm-hmm. and, uh, and really build something. And Peace of Fruits was, was what I saw in my network, in the market, you know, in, my, in the connections that I built in, in Peace Corps that I felt like I could go out there and, and do in a sustainable way that would address development needs but also address market needs because, you know, everybody likes fruit snacks, but people don't tolerate the junk that's in there anymore. Now they're reading labels and they care about what's behind the product. So there seemed like an opportunity. I love it. So tell us more about the product and more about your model and what makes Peaceful Fruits so different. Absolutely. So as you said, Peaceful Fruits, you know, we're a social good snack startup. But what we really do is we make healthy, delicious, rainforest friendly snacks that are actually made from fruit. So like picture your, you know, iconic fruit roll up, if you will. Um, but it's just actually made from whole fruits, right? If you look at a lot of, of those other products that are out there, if you're lucky, uh, you know, the first ingredient will be apple juice concentrate, which usually the first ingredient is corn syrup or sugar. Right. Um, so even in, even in the supposedly good ones, you know, it's apple juice concentrate, which is just still flavored fructose. Um, and so what we said is like, Hey, let's, people are starting to understand how important micronutrients, fiber, you know, how taking a bite of an apple is different from drinking apple juice, especially over processed apple juice. And so let's offer to people that, that real mother nature experience as best you can without, you know, being the one to pick it off the tree. And that's, that's, so that's really what we do is we take those rainforest fruits that there, there is no honest way to enjoy, you know, a fresh acai berry if you're not there next to the tree, right? So right. that's where we take it, you know, we blend it, we dry it, but it's the most, you know, minimal amount of processing you can possibly do because all we're doing is mashing it and then slow drying it so that it is, you know, it's shelf stable. You can, you can take it and ship it across the world, but it's as natural as you can be. And, uh, and as connected to mother nature as you can be much more healthy, so much less processed and lets people access just that incredible vibrancy that you get from being there in the Amazon. It's a very cool product. T- tell me how you help provide jobs for individuals with disabilities. Yeah. So that's a part of our, our mission that really developed organically um, where, you know, we, I started off with that mission of, of, of staying connected to the folks there in the Amazon um, but as we started to, to, to grow a little bit, um, you know, there was, we were selling more snacks than I could produce. You know, we started off literally, uh, you know, first I was renting space in a little, um, commercial kitchen incubator, uh, here in Cleveland called the Cleveland culinary launch kitchen. And then we outgrew that and we were, and I was, you know, producing out of the back of a restaurant at two o'clock in the morning, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, but as that, it was too much to do all of that. That's where we started to look for a production partner. And, you know, we, we could have, there were, you know, there was a guy in, in California, there's a guy in Colorado. Um, but I really wanted to keep this about the communities that I call home. And that's the Amazon and that's Akron. And so uh, we wanted to do it around here in our backyard. Um, and it was really just organic where uh, literally in week one of Peaceful Fruits, I took the snacks that I didn't even make in the kitchen. Like I literally made them in my mom's kitchen, um, you know, just as samples. And we went to a little farmer's market and uh, handed them out to people to be like, would you buy this? You know, like, is it terrible? Is it edible? (laughs) And one of the the people that responded most and, you know, just got so excited about the product and the story happened to be a a young man named AJ, uh, actually about my age and, and his mom and AJ has severe down syndrome. Um, and his mom, you know, looked at us and said, Hey, he loves this product. And AJ has, you know, stuck a lot of stickers in his day. He's really good at envelope sticking and, and, you know, or envelope stuffing and sticker sticking and all that. So if you grow and you start to need some help packaging your product, give us a call. Hmm. And six months later, sure enough, we're starting to, you know, outgrow, as I said, and we called up AJ and started to work with him to package. And then 
you know, there we are sitting across the table from his mom and she know, and we're talking about our, our, our issues. And she's like, well, Hey, Evan, there's this other nonprofit that works with people with disabilities and they just launched a, a commercial kitchen and they're looking for folks that need food produced, you know? <laughs> um, and so it's just one of those organic developments hmm. where we had a need, it fit our mission of economic empowerment. Yeah. Um, and very frankly, you know, I, I'll just put it on the line. They quoted a good price, right. you know? I mean, that's something that people often overlook with the, the, the whole, you know, industry of, of folks with disabilities. I mean, we pay full wages. Like we're not paying them anything less than the market rate, but they do good work. Right. They do good work and they, and, and they work hard and they add a lot to the bottom line. And so it's, uh, it just made good business sense. It made good mission sense. And uh, we've never looked back. Love it. That, I love when things happen organically like that. It's not something that you push through. Uh, just that, that's my favorite kind of movement. Tell me a little bit. I, Absolutely. I, I'm just kind of curious about your timeline. I, it's different for every business, but what year did you start? And kind of give me a couple of highlights of, of you know, when, when, was, when did you first realize, wow, we're onto something here that's, that's, that's big and sustainable as, as a legit business that we're going to grow? Well, I think we're, I think we're still in that, uh, still in the stage of realizing that, right? Because every, uh, you know, it's at every step there's new, uh, there's, there's new opportunities and and new obstacles. But, um, you know, for us, we started in May of 2014. Uh, so, you know, we just turned three a couple months ago. Um, and, uh, and really, you know, those first, especially those first couple months, we're just figuring out how to make it right. So I think it was in. December of that year that we actually made our first official batch, um, you know, of like two dozen snacks or something, wow. you know, those are the first ones that came off of a, you know, legal to sell there in a, in a commercial kitchen and, you know, up to, up to spec or whatever with the, uh, the FDA and the Ohio department of ag. Um, and, uh, so that was a huge milestone and, you know, getting to see your product on the store shelf in a local store called mustard seed. Um, you know, that was a huge milestone. Um, and then from there, it was it was really all about um, just figuring out how to connect with people, right? Where you know you go into the grocery store and you hand out snacks and you see the response. Um, you know that was what really kept driving us. Where there were lots, I mean, I'll be honest, there were lots of discouraging things, right? Like, right. Um, you know, you would you would go in and say, and some and someone would just not get it, right? You know, they're looking right. at. Why, why are you selling an expensive fruit roll up? Like what a, what a crazy idea. And you have to step back and say, well, you're not in my target market, right? Like I'm, you know, I, this isn't the right store for me, or this isn't the right location for me, or I need to change my packaging so they understand how it goes. But, um, but that's been the iterative process that we've gone through. And at each step, we find enough of those right people that, that get it, that it says it's time to, you know, double down and then double down again, and then double down again to keep on progressing. And, you know, I think the next, the, the thing that then really, you know, started to really resonate with us is two really cool organic things happened where number one was that, uh, Teen Vogue, um, featured us as one of their, uh, favorite snacks of the, of the year in, uh, in 2015, just totally organically, right? Just, just same thing, just word of mouth, you know? Hmm. Um, and then just after that, yeah. So, uh, the getting that so with teen vogue recognizing us as one of the top snacks of 2015 that was just a huge boost about you know the the quality of the product and the product resonating with people across the country and then the second thing that happened is that we were recognized as one of the top social enterprise startups of northeast ohio where you know suddenly we're getting validation for the product and for the mission for the story for the brand that says hey people are getting what you're all about and you know, and responding not just with encouragement, but in that case also with dollars to say, keep on going. And so that was really huge for us. Yeah, that's exciting. So, so tell me about when did Shark Tank happen for you guys and how did that come about? So this was a, it was, it was pretty, uh, it was a pretty crazy year, almost exactly a year ago. Um, we uh, was, yeah, wow, it really was. It was almost exactly a year ago. Hmm. We were named one of the top social enterprise startups in Ohio in uh, at the end of May, and then we uh, were trying to ride that wave and go to Expo East, which is a major food show. Um, and so we did a Kickstarter 
uh, where we actually set out to raise $10,000 to help us go to Expo East and we doubled it. We ended up getting 22. Great. Um, and it was right in the middle of that, that Shark Tank, Shark Tank calls us <laughs> and says, Hey, we, we want you to be on Shark Tank. Um, wow. and you know, but, and you know, that means you're invited to apply. It doesn't mean they're like, right. you know, giving you a ticket for the next right. day. And they're like, you know, by the way, the casting period already closed, um, or is closing like on Monday, but we'll give you an extra week to get your, you know, <laughs> your, your, your application is like, Oh, thanks guys. Right. You know? And so we're like, we're doing the Kickstarter. We're preparing for Expo East, like the single, you know, it's like the second largest food event in the country and the, you know, the biggest that we've ever been to by a factor of a thousand. Um, and then they accept us. And there was literally, uh, in a two week period, we were closing our Kickstarter. We were, uh, going to Expo East. I was in LA filming Shark Tank. And we also did our single largest local event. We had a featured booth at the, uh, Akron marathon. Wow. Um, so that was that was a year ago, and it's then high for your sure team, enough, this for you year, and your team, wasn't it? Yeah, it it wow. really was, and then this year was just as crazy in the last month. So I guess it's just a, a good time of year for for me. I love or it. Or a crazy time of year. I love it. So t- tell me, take me back, man. I want to talk just a little bit. You, you talked about starting, your being in your mom's kitchen, making making some of the first batches, and then tell me a little bit about so for your journey so far today. What is it that was is your proudest moment so far? And it doesn't have to be a big moment. What, what, it could be a really something small that you just really cherish. What, so it, it's it's not a moment so much as a concept. Um, you know, so here here's here's the important thing that anybody thinking about a startup has to recognize, right? Most startups fail. Right. It's it, it's the facts, and uh, part of the way that I've built Piso Fruits from day one is that it's about it's not just about you know sales figures. Sales figures are a part of sustainability. You know, you got to make money to help people you know, to do anything. You got You got to make money. So, and there's nothing wrong with that, but we want to build it in a way that we're not waiting to do good. And that's, that's where like, you know, sometimes people, peaceful people ask me like, what do you mean? Peaceful fruits is a, is a social enterprise. Like you're not giving back any money. You're not like donating something. I'm like, you're right. We're not, I don't wait to make a, I don't give back a percentage of profits. I pay, pay people a fair wage up front. Right. I don't, I don't wait to, to donate at the end of the quarter. I'm employing people with disabilities in partnership with a, with the, the nonprofits right now today. Right. And so the single, you know, the, 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 the statistic that really encaps, encapsulates that is during our pilot last year, we paid over $45,000 in wages to people with disabilities in Akron, Ohio. Nice. Right. And that means that even if we, if we fall apart, you know, we, we, for whatever reason, peaceful fruits fails tomorrow, or next year or 10 years from now, during that year, we created jobs that had a real meaningful impact on some of the people that need it most, right, in our, in our community. And so I'm incredibly proud of, being, of having the opportunity to make that impact and to, you know, to really spend that money in the way where it's doing good for my business but really doing good for the community at the same time to everyone's benefit. I love that you're doing that. And, you know, it took me a while for that. I was really just a focused entrepreneur that was really just wanted to create things, but I didn't have that social factor to it. And truly been the last several years that's been more forefront on my mind. And I've heard some great rock star leaders who waited until they were in their 40s and 50s and had major companies they bought and sold, several of them along the way, very successful, but had that social component mm-hmm. missing, which is critical. And I love that you've got it built in as part of the fiber of who you are and your brand on a day-to-day basis. I think that's really powerful. I'm jealous on that part of it, but I think it gives us all something to, to think about and work towards with our own businesses. Hey, this is the Business Leadership Series, so I obviously want to ask you a couple questions about leadership. Tell me about your personal Absolutely. leadership style and, and how do you build a, a intentional culture at, in your work environment? I think that's a, that's a great question. And enjoyed about Peace Corps as, you know, a little bit more mature professional. You know, still, I was 26 when I joined the Peace Corps. Hmm. So not like, you know, I'm not claiming to be a, a industry expert about anything. But, you know, even after having three or four years of leadership and management experience, going in and being able to see the different styles that it takes to be uh, successful in different cultures, in different environments was incredibly impactful on me. And what I learned from Peace Corps was how to lead from the side, right? You know, you, there's, you talk about leading from the front, leading from the back, leading by example, leading, you know, there's all, for Peace Corps, it's about leading from the side, which means 
you know, you help set the path, but mostly you get out of the way, right? Because the point of Peace Corps is that you want to set, set up the, you know, the, the track so that it doesn't need you because you're going to be gone after a year or two years or two months, you know, what, whatever it is, you're not, you, you don't, you're not going to be there. And so um, that's the same style that I try to instill in Peaceful Fruits because as an entrepreneur, I can't do it all myself, right? I, I can't uh, wear, I'm wearing a lot of hats, but, you, but you, you have to find people that can take it, can run with it, and that can keep that, you know, keep that ball rolling on their own. Like I always say, two kind of people in the world, and this is what I learned from Peace Corps and what I learned from entrepreneurship. There's only two kind of people. There's creative problem solvers, and there's everybody else. And as an early stage startup, you need the first one. Right. And then as a growing company, you need more and more of the, of the other one. And I'm not saying one is better than the other, but they serve different purposes on your team. Absolutely. And people that can, you know, that you can just get out of the way of and say, here's the vision, here's the goal. Let's all get the crowd moving in the same direction and then let it populate, let it grow, let it be organic. That's, that's my style at this early stage of Peace Roots. And then now, little by little, I think this is where, where we've been smart. If we fill those execution roles where we, we fill those, you know, you got to get in there and get it done. That's where, you know, some of the folks with Down syndrome, the folks with autism, the folks with some of these disabilities that, that we employ, that's where they come in and excel because, you know, they're going to do an amazing job at, at, at getting that work done. And so it's all about dividing the responsibilities and building a process where there's room for creati- creativity and there's room for production because you need both to succeed in any business. Man, absolutely solid, spot on advice. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. Um, man, you, you've, you've got it figured out for sure. Uh, it's taken me a lot longer <laughs> to learn these things, but I'm with you now. Uh, and so I, I really appreciate your insight. <laughs> I don't know there. about that, but I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, I, I, I mean, startups can understand and, and entrepreneurs that don't know how to let go uh, can understand uh, uh, having that creative and problem solving, but it does. There does come a point where you've got to, uh, if you want to have your leave a legacy and have something that grows and lives beyond you, you've got to look for the others who can step up and do a better job or do the, fill in those gaps with their positions. Uh, so let me ask Absolutely. you for a minute. Tell me about what does we talk about success a lot, and it means something different for everybody. I I get asked often what does success mean to me. So I'm curious for you, what, how do you measure success, and what does it even look like for you? So I'll, let me let me answer that by by telling you a little bit about Shark Tank, um, because I think it, it says it very well. So going into Shark Tank, uh, which is you know obviously it's a, it's, a, it's a, it was a, another huge milestone. And it's, you know, it's a little bit weird because it's sort of your 15 minutes of fame, but it's 15 minutes of fame on reality TV, which is just also a little bit weird. So there's, you know, a lot of different things going on there. Um, but I went, when I was filming Shark Tank, we had $20,000 in revenue. Um, and, you know, Peace of Fruits is, is a branded CPG, right? We're a branded consumer packaged goods company. That's what we are, at the, you know, in, in the categories. And if you do your, your homework, which you better do before you go on Shark Tank or before any <laughs> investor, you learn that the Sharks pretty much don't invest in companies like ours until you have, you know, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 in revenue because they're the kind of investors that want to make a phone call and like, hey, China, Produce this for one tenth the cost, make me a millionaire. Or hey, Walmart, put this guy on every store shelf in every in every one of your stores. Great, just made me ten million dollars. Right. They're not looking to help you build a brand, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's just the stage of investor that they are. Right. But the point is, my goals going in, you know, I, obviously I was looking to get investment. I was looking to get to build relationships. But at the same time, I was realistic. Like we're tiny, you know. There, there's a there's a decent chance we won't get investment. So what are our other goals? And they were threefold, not in no particular order. One was to say, this is my, you know, Peaceful Fruits is my baby. Let's make her look good. And that's where, you know, I want to, I want to get those sharks to say, wow, Evan, this product tastes good, right? Like this is right. a good product. And sure enough, you see, you know, Damon was there chewing on it. And he's like, wow, this is actually pretty good. Like I was skeptical and then I put it in my mouth and I liked it. Wow, great. Um, and then, and then number two, you know, again, a lot of a lot of startups fail. You have to think about the future. You have to think about, you know, what's next. You have to think about keeping yourself motivated and hungry and ready to go. And so, part of my goal was to go in and and, and make Evan look good. Like, let, I'm I'm being honest here, right? Like, right. 
you have to think about your personal brand and your and your own and you know what it takes you to get come in every day and, and work like crazy and sure enough like there's robert you know saying like wow evan you're a smart guy doing good things like i like your approach nice. and it's like all right you know like to get that validation was huge right. and then number three and this is probably the most important one was to say i want to do something not just for myself not just for my company but for the industry and by the industry i mean social enterprise where it's this idea of, you know, doing well and doing good at the same time, you know, like making money and making a difference can go hand in hand. And I had that, you know, debate with some of the sharks there on the show. And, you know, after going back and forth for a couple rounds, there's Mark Cuban chiming in and saying, you know, Evan, you are 100% right. Social enterprise is the future of capitalism and people that don't get it are going to be left behind. Wow. Yeah. And, and so we went, you know, and so we didn't get any investment. But you talk about the definition of success, it was hitting those three things to say, you know, all right, we weren't the right stage to get money from, from the sharks right then, but we're on to something, you know, as, a, as an individual, as a company, and as an industry, I want to keep on slugging away. So that was exactly what I go for every single day. Amazing. That's so cool. Thanks for sharing that. I love it. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at this graph you shared on, on your uh, on your website, what has changed since Shark Tank and what hasn't. Obviously, what hasn't is your handmade organic love, but I'm seeing that before production, 400 snacks a day, after 2,000 snacks a day, before 10 jobs yep. for folks with disabilities, after 25 plus, uh, two years, you had 50,000 in snacks sold, and then within two weeks, you had or you had 50,000 snacks sold, and then within two weeks after, you had 70,000 snacks sold. That's incredible. Yep. What, what yeah. a Shark Tank effect right there. That's, that's amazing. So, <laughs> any, it, was, it was a crazy ride. I love it, and I know you have many more coming that, that, uh, that you're going to uh, be able to uh, keep highlighting soon that you said you're in the midst of right now. Let me ask you, do you have any final entrepreneurial or business advice you want to share with our audience? You know, I, I think that as an, as an entrepreneur um, and just as a, you know, as a person in, in America, um, we sometimes like to only think about the big things, you know, uh, we, 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 cause we're always told to dream big and dream big. And, and that is so important, but I always challenge anyone who's interested in entrepreneurship to actually think small, to think about, you know, what can you do to start moving towards your goal concretely today? You know, like I, I, I speak to the kids in the school sometimes and they're like, oh, we want to, you know, like I ask them what they're, what they're passionate about. Like, oh, we're, we want to, you know, save the planet, you know, climate change or, 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 you know, pollution. I'm like, okay, go pick up trash. Like next time you walk by a soda wrapper, you know, a soda can on, on the, on the, on the, on the recess field or whatever, pick it up. You're do you're, you just started a journey that can maybe, you know, maybe you'll be on the, on the UN climate science panel 40 years from now. I don't know, but start that journey today. And it's the same thing with business where you don't need a million dollars or even $10,000 to try out a business idea, to try out a concept, make some snacks in your mom's kitchen, walk down the road to the farmer's market and hand them out and see what people say, because you're never going to know until you take that little concrete step and who knows where it can be. So I, I think anybody can, can think in that way can try and, and, and see where it takes them. Love it. Great advice. I mean, you think big, but think small too, and you don't have to wait to make a difference or to take steps. So Evan, where can we find Absolutely. your product? So the best place to find us is www.peacefulfruits.com. And we are building our distribution network of, sto of stores just as fast as we can. So if uh, you have a local grocery store or, uh, or a snack shop that you think we should be in, tell them so. Tell them to, to look us up online and, and uh, request it because we'd love to be they're physically in the stores right next to you. And for now, we're definitely right there online. Awesome. Love it. Evan, thank you again for being our guest. I know our listeners are going to enjoy this, and we're going to visit PeacefulFruits.com. Evan, I, I can't wait to see the next great things that happen. We're going to continue to follow your journey. Take care. You too, Derek. Thank you. You've been listening to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. This interview was designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. I want to invite you to join me in supporting the American Diabetes Association. I've got the honor of being a Kiss a Pig candidate this year, which is, means I have the opportunity to help raise money for the American Diabetes Association locally. 
the research, the ADA has been funding initiative and innovative research to combat diabetes since 1955. And in 2011, they funded more than $35.75 million a year in research at 139 research institutions across the country. The statistics, approximately 1.25 million American children and adults have type 1 diabetes. As many as one in three American adults will have diabetes in 2050 if present trends continue. I want to invite you to join me in supporting the American Diabetes Association. You can learn more at diabetes.org or stopdiabetes.com to see how you can get involved.